Hello and welcome to another timeless gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a mono green Field of the Dead ramp deck with Primeval Titan as the centerpiece. I originally noticed this list on the MTGA Zone website, so all credit to them for coming up with the original build. I've made a few modifications and adjusted the deck to my liking, and this is where I ended up. So the game plan is very much get a Primeval Titan on the battlefield, either by ramping into it or by casting a natural order, which requires us to sacrifice a green creature to search up any green creature from our library and put it straight onto the battlefield and we can actually cast a primeval titan as early as turn three in this deck thanks to the combination of castle garenbrig with a new sunken citadel so castle garenbrig already capable of casting primeval titan out of schedule but now with sunken citadel contributing two mana towards activated abilities of lands we can help pay for the ability on castle garenbrig and that's how we can cast a turn three titan if we started off with a turn one arboreal grazer or the kami of bamboo groves putting additional land onto the battlefield this one can also be channeled to get to forest which can also be helpful when playing around cards like blood moon which can otherwise shut down all our non-basic lanes so having a few basic forests to search up is quite useful and then we can also now cast an early spelunking in this deck which is a perfect addition to this strategy lands will now enter the battlefield untapped can also potentially gain for life if we put a sunken citadel in play which has the cave subtype and then we also get to draw cards so it replaces itself and then a spelunking allows us to cast a primeval titan and then even if we're tapped out we can immediately attack with primeval titan by getting a copy of battlements and then any land that produces red mana which will now all enter the battlefield untapped so we can pay the red, activate battlements, titan attacks, and gets to search up two more lands, and that's how we can get ahead very quickly by getting our Field of the Dead going, which does require us to have seven or more lands with different names, which is why we do have quite a few one-offs in this deck to search up, which gives our Primeval Titan more utility, but we're still running four copies of Castle Garenbrig and four copies of Citadel, just because that combo is so powerful at ramping out a titan. And then I'm only running three copies of Field of the Dead, since you don't necessarily want to draw multiples early on and it's unlikely that you need all four copies to go over the top so three copies is usually sufficient but if the mirror match becomes very popular I could see going up to four copies there as well and then some of our one-off lands include Bajuka Bog, which can try and exile the opponent's graveyard, so that gives us a bit of graveyard hate. Then we've got the Green Gate, which also has the forest type, so we can actually search it up with our green fetch lands, and then can help us seek an all-land card, so that can be useful in grindier matchups. Then Colony Garden is also perfect in this deck, making an 0-1 plant token when it enters. It's also green, so we can actually sacrifice it to our natural order to get Primeval Titan, so that's also exciting, and it also just makes a blocker to help out against aggro and then a cinder glade also has the forest type so we can search it up with our fetch lands and to combine with our battlement to give primeval titan haste blast zone gives us a bit of interaction especially if we want to blow up some one drops it's very useful and then a Radiant Fountain gaining two life, also helpful against the burn decks out there, so we don't end up uh, dying while we have a field of zombies in play. And then on the right hand side, I've got all the untapped green sources on turn one to help us cast Grazer and Kami. And these are also, of course, very important since if we have a hand full of tapped lands, our hand's not going to be very smooth. So we've got Boseju, which can also be channeled as a potential answer to a Blood Moon. And we even have two copies of Sylvan's Crying to help find specific lands in certain matchups. And then four copies of once upon a time which can find any creature or land in the top of our deck so that's also going to help smooth out our draws when we get to cast it for free as our first spell so that can find a primeval titan as well or one of our accelerants if we're missing those instead and then for added consistency we also have two copies of fierce empath a one one that when it enters can find a primeval titan basically and put it into our hands and then we can also maybe sacrifice it to our natural order if necessary and then our additional lands include Lair of the Hydra, also untapped early on, so we can cast our Accelerants, and then later in the game an extra win condition, or also potentially a creature we could sacrifice to natural order in a pinch. And then a snow-covered forest alongside regular forest, so if one of each to search up with our fetch lands while still having different names for Field of the Dead, so that's also quite important. Usually want to start by finding the snow-covered forest, since our Kami gets regular forest from the channel ability, so we diversify a little bit more. 
and then the red green pathway this will come into play as the red side if we search it up with primeval titan but that's usually the goal if we're planning to activate battlements anyway with the spelunking so that's not a problem and then it can still be an extra untapped green source early on stomping ground is something we can fetch for as well so we've got a decent amount of forest to get with our six fetch lanes we will eventually run out but these are also a way to trigger field of the dead twice by playing the fetch lane sacrificing it for one life and then getting either forest snow covered forest stomping ground cinder glade and then the green gate also has the forest type that we can search up and then cavern of souls naming giant also very nice when facing counter spells so we can also maybe search it up with sylvan's crying in the appropriate matchups so yeah that's our deck now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does okay we're on the play and our hands got the primeval titan empath for redundancy but no real ramp unless we find one of our creatures with once upon a time so this hand's actually pretty borderline also don't have any fancy lands to help ramp out the primeval titan like our castle garenbrig so it pains me but this might be a mulligan this is better so i want to keep once upon a time to try and find a creature uh, Colony Garden would also be okay to combo with Natural Order. And then maybe Ditch Primeval Titan. So we keep Spelunking to combo with the Titan we can Natural Order for. I think that makes sense to me. And then we'll start with Once Upon a Time. Opponent responds with Once Upon a Time. So this could be a mirror match, I guess we're put on the Elves version of Natural Order. Well, we found Grazer, so that's good. And then we'll fetch for Forest here. And put in Field of the Dead. Blast Zone could also be key at blowing up a bunch of 1-mana Elves. So our opponent's plan is to Natural Order for Crater Hoof Behemoth which could go over the top of a bunch of uh, zombie tokens. So that's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. Can Spelunking, or we can just Kami, and then next turn we're guaranteed to Natural Order. I think that makes more sense here. Although I guess there's slightly higher upside to Spelunking plus Titan comboing off, as we'll be able to give it haste right away. All right, I guess we'll uh, go with a slightly more explosive line if it works out, and looks like it does. Colony Garden now gives us something else we can sack to the natural order. And then next turn, Primeval Titan with haste. It's going to be difficult to beat. Okay, so step one, natural order. get Titan and then take action for Battlements and the Red Land and they'll all enter untapped at this point so give haste and then we can play Wooded Foothills but I'm not gonna fetch until after we uh, get more copies of Field of the Dead So we want to get probably just two more fields. Those all trigger. Make seven zombies and then we can make more zombies at instant speed with our wooded foothills. And then also a channel Kami to get more forests. Not bad. Archdruid can set up a very scary turn next turn. But uh, we'll see here. Another Shepherd. So they've got three blockers. And we can get Stomping Ground or Gate since they're untapped now with a Spelunking. Channel. 
and this is why getting a snow-covered forest first can pay off since Kami gets regular forest. Make more zombies. And uh, I guess we can graze her for another forest. And then activate battlements to give a zombie token haste for what it's worth. And attack all out. Could also blow up blast zone to deal with the shepherds. Seems okay. And I'm pretty sure opponent was dead regardless. So this doesn't matter too much. Okay, well, that was a convincing victory. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a very solid hand. Kami turn to Spelunking, hopefully turn 3 natural order. And then we can uh, combo off. Dark Ritual, okay. Is this a turn 1 Necropotence? Or Necropotence, I've uh, learned is the correct pronunciation, apparently. Opponent's got a full grip. Alright, so hopefully they don't have too much hand disruption here. Put in Castle. If they're playing fetch lands, they likely have Deathrite Shaman in the deck as well. Opponent passes, so we can Spelunk. And then now with double natural order, we can potentially beat one discard spell. Probably not gonna attack into a Bowmasters. Although they would likely just shoot the Kami to begin with. So if we don't have a creature to sack to the natural order, they're still lair, but that's going to require a bit more mana. Okay, Apprentice, so it's more of a storm deck. I see, okay. So they could still kill us through an army of zombie tokens pretty easily. If they manage to string together enough storm cards. So their opponent is stocking up here. And we can fetch for one of our fancy forests, the gate. Opponent has to discard to hand size. Deadly Dispute is gone. Okay, so time to Natural Order. And get Primeval Titan, get Battlement and a Red Land. Activate for haste. And then probably gonna attack. Do we care about the opponent's graveyard? I don't think so. So what's the most relevant we can do? Maybe gaining two with fountain. Although I also want to make sure we present lethal for next turn. Our opponent could gain a bunch of life back with the apprentice as well. So we could just get double field of the dead. And then we can also activate Lair next turn. I think getting a Fountain might still be slightly safer. So we'll attack, get one Fountain and one Field of the Dead. But we can double check here. I don't think Blast Zone is going to be relevant enough. So we'll just gain two. Make a pair of Zombies. And then we still haven't played a lane, so we can play Wooded Foothills. And 
and then I don't need to sacrifice it to save myself the damage. Suppose we could also Sylvan Scrying for Buseju, but then I'm not going to have the mana to channel it, so I'll just pass. And then we can essentially make more zombies with uh, Wooded Foothills. Opponent is ready to combo off here with another Dark Ritual. So Tendrils is the scary card after they cast a few more spells. Okay, opponent sacking their Apprentice is a good sign. Ornithopter, so that's increasing their storm count some more. So they can cast one Tendrils of Agony at the very least. But they likely have a few more spells they want to cast first. Beseech, okay. And what are they going to get? Tendrils of Agony, makes sense. So the storm count is not game over yet. But our opponent is gaining a bunch of life back. 17. So I'll fetch to make another zombie. And then with the uh, Lair of the Hydra we should have lethal. Unless they've got a fatal push. Okay, Blast Zone. Now we could also Natural Order for another Primeval Titan. We'll have to sacrifice a green creature, so maybe Sylvan Scrying for Colony Garden. Play it, make a zombie. Natural order. Get another prime time. Just trying to cover all my bases here. And alright, that's gonna be enough for a concession. Battlements to give it haste, and then we would still have a little bit of mana to uh, activate Lair of the Hydra as well, just in case. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got another Natural Order hand. Yeah, this looks good. Fetch for Forest, play Grazer first. And up against the Lurus deck, so we can expect a bit of hand disruption, potentially. But they'll specifically need the rest or Thoughtseize. And we also don't need to fear Blood Moon if they've got Lurus as companion. Turn one Hive, and Thoughtseize, that's too bad. So that takes our natural order. So now we just want to set up for Primeval Titan being drawn naturally. Spelunking isn't bad, so we'll maybe start there. Find a blast soon. So yeah, if we Sylvan Scrying for our cave, we can um, combine it with Castle Garenbrig to make extra mana for Titan. Although at this point, any land will really get it done. And there's Field of the Dead already. So Kami is going to get channeled. And then Sylvan Scrying. Opponent doesn't appear to be playing blue, so we don't need to get Cavern of Souls. So in that case, what do we want to get? Maybe just a value land, like our uh, Gate or Lair of the Hydra. Those are probably up on our list. Yeah, let's get the Gate. 
and then we can play the gates and then still channel Kami or take a blast soon. And if the game goes long, we can still maybe get there with our Field of the Dead tokens. Pluto Delta could mean blue mana for counter spells, although unlikely to have double blue counter spell with her current mana base, and it's just black red. Another Bowmasters, sure. So if they damage the Grazer, we're not going to block the army, can still block the other Bowmasters. Unholy Heat to finish off Grazer, fair enough. Well, for now we're taking a little bit of damage, but it's still manageable. Get our forests. And the once upon a time. So if I cast it now, then if I find Titan, I'll be a little bit short of casting it, since we didn't get the cave. So in that case... I could play it in the opponent's end step, I suppose. If we find another Man Accelerant, we could play it and start making zombies, potentially. Let's see, four, five, six. I guess we would still be one land short since we have double castle. So instead, I think we want to uh, activate the gate instead. Play fields, activate gates, and we can also do that at instant speed. So we don't run into Thoughtseize taking away a Titan after we find it. So yeah, let's try that. And there's still the option to take a Blast soon. Alright, so now Inquisition. I guess we once upon a time in response. And then we'll be taking a Blast soon. Find Primeval Titan, excellent. So now they also need a Thoughtseize. A Ragavan dashed. That's acceptable. Could activate Blast Zone to destroy it. I don't think we care enough. Fall to 9. Even if our opponent's got a few Lightning Bolts, I think we'll be fine. And then we can take a Blast Zone here. Another Primeval Titan, alright, so we're ready to roll here. Play Titan using Castle. And for one mana, they would need a uh, Unholy Heat, I guess, to take out our Titan. Uh, looks like they have it. So we won't be able to give it haste. But we'll still get two lands, so now I don't need to get the haste enabler. We can get a Radiant Fountain to gain two, and a Colony Garden to make a Chum Blocker. Looks okay. And then we can still activate Blast Zone here. And then next turn we can try again. Still have our Gate we can activate as well. And death right is fine. Okay, so it looks like we're in the clear here. Doing a quick check of how many lands we have, but even if I sag blast soon, we'll still have enough lands to enable Feel of the Dead. I'm just going to activate it now. And then play Primeval Titan. And 
and that's going to be enough for a concession with a spelunking in play. Our opponent's going to be facing an army of zombies. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand has potential. We've got both Castle and Citadel to cast Titan ahead of schedule, and then, uh, yeah, maybe find Titan with Once Upon a Time. If not, Empath can get it. And I'll grab a Buseju over Foothills, in case we need to destroy Blood Moon, and then fetch to be able to play Grazer. And get the Citadel in play. Okay, so turn 3 Empath. Turn 4 Titans, the plan. Opponent's got the Mountain, so that can potentially mean Blood Moons in our future. For now, Grazer doing an excellent job blocking Swiss Spear. And Kami can be another source of green mana, so that's nice. Okay, so play Empath. And, uh, yeah. Get Primeval Titan. So pretty much the ideal start against Monored. And with a Busejo in hand I'm feeling pretty safe. Swiss Spear into a Lightning Bolt. I'll take four. Even have Radiant Fountain to gain two here, so couldn't really get any better. Four lands, still casting Primeval Titan. Yeah, that's the power of Sunken Citadel and Castle Garenbrick, which is why we have four of each in the deck. So definitely get one Field of the Dead, and then maybe a Colony Garden to make an extra blocker. Or uh, we could get a Blast Zone to destroy all one drops. That also makes sense. And then I'll hang back with Empath. Yeah, I guess our draw could have been even better if we replace Empath with Spelunking and then naturally draw the Primeval Titan so we can attack with it right away. But uh, yeah, can't complain. Attack from double Swift Spear, so if they have another Lightning Bolt or any 3 damage effect, they can trade for it, so doesn't seem necessary. Probably gonna take quite a bit of damage here. But I would like my Titan to survive. And then now... We just wanna try and prevent taking damage if possible. And Blast Zone can deal with the Swiss Spears, so Titan attacks, getting probably Colony Garden, and could get another Field of the Dead. And then we can play Wooded Foothills, but not necessarily sacrifice it to make more zombies at instant speed. So yeah, let's attack. Don't think Bajuka Bog does much for me. A Lair of the Hydra, also an option to help close out the game. Sure. And alright, our opponent concedes they don't have 9 points of burn to close out the game. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing a Lurus deck. And we've got Once Upon a Time, which is looking to find one of our accelerants at one mana. We already have Primeval Titan and No Castle Garenbrig. So yeah, this hand's borderline, but Primeval Titan tends to be quite powerful against Lurus decks, which tend to be more mid-rangey. So I'm hoping once upon a time can find something to do early, and then our hand's okay. Turn one at Channeler. And Bobble. So they could be on kind of a black, red, or mono red burn deck. Since you typically don't see mountain in the Grixis piles. Yeah, 
another bobble. All right, that's uh, three of them gone already. Pretty good alongside channeler to enable surveil, but opponent kept on top. They're gonna have a look. Okay, that was an eventful turn one. Found a foothills, so let's see what we can find here. Bobbling now is strange since it's not going to give them relevant information. Did find a Kami. So we can play that right away. And then could go for the tapped colony garden to get that out of the way. Sure. And then if Foothills gets another basic land, Cinderglade enters untapped. I see Stitcher Supplier, so they're going pretty hard on those Graveyard Synergies. Channeler flies already, and a Ragavan we can now hope to block. So we can gain two with Radiant Fountain, or just play tapped Stomping Ground. Get that one out of the way. We would like to preserve one creature in case we top deck natural order. But uh, if we can trade for Ragavan, that's probably worth it. So I doubt they're gonna attack with it. Diabolic Intents, okay. So they're likely playing with Bloodgast as well to get it back from the graveyard. Maybe Goblin Bombardment to sacrifice creatures over and over. Tendrils, all right, so they're trying to storm off as well. Maybe they're going for Underworld Breach, which also pairs well with Channelers and Storm cards in general. So then they could combo next turn already with Double Channeler. They're unlikely to fizzle out. So yeah, we had a pretty fair draw, all things considered. Battlements, not really what we needed. So I guess we'll gain two, which could matter. And then next turn we could get the forest that lets us seek. Although maybe I should have done that sooner since I believe it does enter tapped normally. So take six. And do we see an underworld breach? Dark ritual first. Yeah, I don't think we're surviving another turn. Could also just be a Tendrils. Nope, another Diabolic Intent first. Sack Ragavan. And then now if they get Underworld Breach, they've got a very full graveyard. And they should be able to just kill us here with Dark Rituals and uh, another Tendrils. Yeah, there it is. So, they get to exile three cards from their graveyard to replay one of them. And with double channeler, they can basically keep putting stuff in the graveyard and then eventually cast a lightning bolt a few times or uh, just a tendrils for the win. Opposing combo decks that have evasive creatures and lots of burn spells can uh, easily beat us since they uh, can ignore all the zombie tokens we make with Primeval Titan. So we need an exceptionally fast draw to win these matchups. Opponent also packing Thoughtseize. So this seems like about the worst matchup you can uh, piece together for this deck. We do have Blast Stone as potential interaction for Chandler, but that's about it. And then I guess Bojuka Bog to exile the graveyard can also maybe slow them down. But with double Chandler they can just refill the graveyard very quickly. So we're very dead here, but I'll let the opponent go through the motions, just to kind of showcase it. They can cast a few Dark Rituals, increase the Storm Count, and then Tendrils of Agony with a pretty high Storm Count already. And it's going to be lethal. Let's 
and see if they keep going or if they're satisfied with their storm count. They know all our cards in hand, so they've got perfect information. Storm count is seven. So that's already more than enough. Goes for a bobble. Well, I guess your opponent could end up timing out if they're not careful. Alright, goes for the tendrils now. And that's gonna do it. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Lurus, and uh, yeah, our hand has both Castle and Citadel, so that's nice. And then once upon a time, sadly, only get to play one of them for free. But if we find a Primeval Titan, that could be great. If we find a one-man Accelerant, we can set up a turn two Spelunking, and then hopefully find Titan with a second once upon a time. I'll give it a shot. And then into Swiss Pierce, our opponent on an aggressive deck. So if we can save Citadel to gain 4 with Spelunking, that could be nice. Take our draw step, and Gracer was excellent. Okay, so let's start with Once Upon a Time, trying to find Titan now. And no Titan. Can grab Blast Zone or Colony Garden. Blast Zone can deal with all 1-drops. Colony Garden gives us a Chum Blocker. Let's go with uh, Colony Garden, I think. And then next turn we can Spelunking, putting in Citadel to gain 4. So they're on the Black-Red Burn variant. I'll block. And a Searing Blood gonna finish off Gracer and deal 3. Pretty effective. So stick to the plan here. And then I could still play Kami versus keeping it to channel, but when we have Sylvan's Crying and Once Upon a Time, that doesn't seem necessary. Okay, so we're just missing Titan now, and with a Spelunking in play we can give it haste. Another Swiss Spear. I might want to keep one creature just so we can uh, potentially set up a... Uh, Natural Order, even though Sylvan Scrying could get another Colony Garden, which enters untapped. So I guess I'll jump with both. Buseju could destroy their uh, enchantment here, or maybe a Den, but I guess we're enabling Den by giving them an extra land in a way. So yeah, step one's gonna be to uh, cast Once Upon a Time. And with Citadel plus Castle, we can still potentially cast a Titan here. No Titan, found a Field of the Dead. Although we're somewhat far from activating it. So what do we get with Sylvan Scrying as a question? Can get our uh, Forest that lets us seek to provide a bit of card advantage, or we could get a Radiant Fountain here. Yeah, I mean, we're getting somewhat close to enabling Field. Is there anything else? I guess Blast Zone is still an option with Triple Swiss Spear. That might be worth getting, actually. And then we can use Buseju here if necessary. Yeah, I don't think we're winning the game by just making a couple zombies with Field of the Dead. We need to find our Primeval Titan, pretty much. Taking six. Wanna wait until end of turn to Buseju. 
Eidolon. Do we care about Eidolon? Doesn't deal us damage if we uh, cast our Primeval Titan, but uh, it's probably still worth taking out, even though we enable Den of the Bugbear then. Blast Zone will deal with everything, including the two Sagas, so that can clean up nicely. So I don't actually know if we need to besage you, the Eidolon. I'll just take my turn, and then we can decide another Sylvan's Crying. So yeah, it's definitely going to be Blast Zone here. And we're going to have to activate before these trigger. And then we can wait to destroy Eidolon, or we can destroy it now. And then Sylvan's Crying for Field of the Dead. And then next turn we could maybe make our first zombie token. But then, with a land, they can activate then. I think it's still probably fine. Could also argue Bajuka Bog to exile their graveyard so Lurus doesn't get anything back, although it's still going to be two turns before that happens. Could get our gates to seek a non-land card next turn. Lair of the Hydra could also be our own creature land to try and fight Den of the Bugbear. So there's a few options. But Field of the Dead is active with one other land that we don't have in play. Although we are somewhat likely to draw another castle or citadel. So I'm actually liking Lair of the Hydra more than Field of the Dead right now. And I think I prefer Lair over Bujuka Bog, just because it gives us an answer to Den of the Bugbear. And then it will enter untapped next turn, thanks to Spelunking. Opponent will fire up Den. Alright, so we can still top deck a Primeval Titan here. Another Spelunking. It's not amazing. But it does give us a redraw. And then Citadel can make a bigger Lair of the Hydra as well. Alright, so now I can make a 4-4 layer of the Hydra and still block with it. And if they don't attack, we can seek with our gate instead. So, close game. Opponent puts Lurus in hand. And does not attack into our lair. And Fierce Empath can now get Primeval Titan. And we should have the mana to cast both. So play Titan. We'll be able to give it haste. And that's going to turn the corner very quickly. Getting double feel of the dead, which is now active. Or we can uh, Bushuka Bog their graveyard. Can still once upon a time and maybe play a land. So we'll have plenty of zombies. Yeah, I guess getting rid of the graveyard is safer. And that's enough for a concession. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And what do we think of our opener? We've got Castle plus Citadel, so that's helpful in casting Primeval Titan. So if we can once upon a time into a one drop, this hand could actually lead to a very early Titan. So I'll give it a shot. And a no one drop. Did find a Fierce Empath, which I guess gives us access to a second Titan in case of a discard spell. I think I prefer that over the alternatives. And then what to play here. Maybe tapped Citadel. 
even though keeping it for Spelunking could gain us for life later. But I'll just get the tap plants out of the way. Once upon a time, usually better to cast in your own turn once you have a bit more information from the draw step. Finds Edwina's Elite, opponent on an elf version of Natural Order. And our hand has not improved, so we're off to a pretty slow start. I do want to get a forest in play for Castle Garenbrig. So this is fine. Save the fetch lands until after we get Field of the Dead in play, hopefully. Opponent starting to go wide. There's another Titan for now. Play Fierce Empath, and then there's only going to be one Titan left in the deck. But we can already cast it next turn, thanks to Castle plus Citadel. Although, can we compete with the Elf deck if they've got a Natural Order next turn? We're probably dead to a Crater Hoof. So I'll take the trade. So I can get Battlements plus maybe one Field of the Dead. And then next turn... I can give another Titan haste and hope they don't have a natural order here. Archdruid is potentially still beatable. Okay, so we want to tap carefully. So this way we can still Battlements on Titan. And then we want to attack, get more copies of Field of the Dead, and then our fetch land uh, will also generate more zombies. So let's go for it. So a three, four, five, six. I do need to get one more different land other than Field to be able to make the zombies. And I suppose either a Colony Garden or Radiant Fountain are relevant. So let's go for a Colony Garden. And then now we can get Blast Zone alongside Field of the Dead. And get Radiant Fountain plus another Colony Garden. Okay, opponent takes it. And then we haven't played land for turn yet. Make three zombies each time. Fetch four forests, play Grazer. And put in another fetch land. Well, hopefully this is enough zombies to survive a Crater of Behemoth. We'll find out. Can definitely beat a Warmaster activation. Put him going for a once upon a time. So that's good news. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. And what do we think of our hand? Cavern can name Spirit, so we can play turn one Kami. Up against a Lurus deck, so we can once upon a time see if we can find a Titan. Finding Sunken Citadel is good with Castle as well. Yeah, I think we've got enough going for us. Blood Crypt for Ragavan, so Kami can maybe block it, but they are likely to have removal. Spelunking, also useful. And uh, getting a forest isn't bad, so I can save Cavern for Primeval Titan. Not that I expect counterspells necessarily, but it's also a land, so Castle comes into play untapped. 
which we might struggle with otherwise. Although if I get Titan, we at least have two copies in case of a Thoughtseize. We can still Kami, but we might not be able to play a 3-drop next turn with double castle. So it's a close call. I think I get the forest. And then we can save Cavern for Giant. Channeler is next, and a Fatal Push on Kami. One field exiled, which is relevant if uh, we need access to all three. So for now, play the Spelunking. And then next turn we can Empath plus Once Upon a Time. Could also go for Empath to try and block Ragavan. And then I still wouldn't be able to play Primeval Titan next turn. So it's going to be stuck in hand for a while. Yeah, I'll just Spelunking. And we found a Titan anyway, so this can name Giant. So now if we draw a land, we can actually cast a Titan. And Grazer we don't mind seeing. And a Diabolic Intense, that's potentially scary. So this is likely a combo deck with Underworld Breach. So getting a Bojuka Bog with Titan is going to be important. But sadly we can't cast a Titan yet. So in that case, once upon a time, likely to find a land. And then I could Fierce Empath to get another Titan, so we have a backup in case of a Thoughtseize. Alright, let's see if we get another turn here. There's a chance they can combo off already. Another Intent. Okay, so if they get a Thoughtseize here, and they only have the one copy, it's not too bad. And then we'll get the Bujuka Bog. They are looking at the graveyard, so maybe it's going to be a turn where they can go off with Breach, but they're a bit light on mana. Take that trade, they likely have another Ragavan. Okay, cast Titan. And then we can give it haste here with the Battlements. And then we'll get Bujuka Bog and Field of the Dead. There was a small risk our opponent had a removal for Titan. So want to exile their graveyard and get a Field of the Dead going. So hopefully that'll slow them down, and enough for a concession. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we've got a very solid hand. Turn 1 Gracer, turn 2 Spelunking. Now it could be a little awkward that we drew the Battlements, since I wouldn't be able to search it up with Titan now, but so be it. Opponent with Gigantha could be a domain strategy. So I don't think we're too worried about Blood Moon. Otherwise we want to channel Kami to get some forests. Found a forest anyway. So yeah, we can Spelunking. See what we pick up. Ideally a Sunken Citadel. Well, there we go. So it not only does that gain for life, but it also synergizes quite well with Castle. So sure, I'll play Kami. Put in forests, and then there's even a chance that we can play Titan and give it haste right away with Battlements. We just need to draw any land, really, since it'll be untapped with a Spelunking. And 
and a cavo is fine. All right, so it's go time. So I want to tap carefully here. Auto tappers cooperating. Play Titan. One, two, three, four, five. So we want to get to one field, one author for now. And uh, what do we want to get in this matchup? Probably just a Lair of the Hydra. Although I don't think it's going to be super relevant. Give Titan haste. And now we can get double Field of the Dead. Blast Zone was maybe also a consideration. And that's enough for a concession. Well, that was a pretty powerful turn 3, and it earns us a rank up to Mythic. Awesome. Alright, so I'm quite happy with how this monogreen field deck performed. Primeval Titan, just very difficult to beat for any slower mid-range or control deck out there, unless you're packing Blood Moon to answer it, and even then there's still ways to get around Blood Moon or just attack with a 6-6 Trample a few times, and that might get it done. So it's not an easy deck to hate out, even if you come prepared, maybe play an enchantment that can give all tokens minus 2, minus 2, but uh, even then the field deck can come prepared with enchantment removal, like Boseju can sideboard in answers as well that you can maybe tutor up with your natural order. So it's a pretty resilient deck, so the best way to beat it is just being a fast combo deck that doesn't rely too much on creatures, pretty much. Any deck that can win on the stack, like a Tainted Pact or kind of an Underworld Breach combo Storm deck, those are going to be the harder matchups. Burn can also be tough if they're off to a good start, so it's certainly beatable, but uh, you better have the right deck since it's very difficult to do so even after sideboard. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day!